Welcome everybody to another episode of our first time buyer market update for Southern California. My name is Stephen Mead with Domicile Real Estate, where we are on a mission to help California's renters become homeowners. Uh, we have just passed through the Labor Day holiday. And, you know, for those of you who might not be familiar with our market, I usually like to tell people, you know, generally the Southern California real estate is not nearly as seasonal as other parts of the country. We don't have some sort of winter freeze where almost no transactions take place. We do, however, have a couple of interesting points of the year. And one of those interesting points is sort of that August through Labor Day is typically actually a very slow market for us. And this is mainly because people are on vacation, uh, their kids are going back to school, and then we see things actually pick up in September and October. So uh, kind of curious to see if that's gonna happen this year. It's been kind of an interesting year this far. We're talking about this being the new normal because I want to go ahead and show you some signs of stabilization that we're seeing in our market that make it seem like it's going to be like it is now uh, with some minor tweaks for the foreseeable future. So let's go ahead, let's get started and figure out how to make better real estate decisions. Oh, as always, if you are not a homeowner and you would like to be a homeowner, or if there is somebody in your life that you think should be a homeowner in Southern California, absolutely reach out to us. We would love to lend you our expertise and help you or that person you know who needs to own a home, help them with their dream as well. So let's go ahead and get started with the stats. Uh, let's see. It is saying my screen share is paused for some reason and it's not uh, not wanting to do it. So. Let me see here, we've got some minor technical difficulties, but we're gonna get through this pretty quickly. I think I have too many other uh, other windows open, honestly, in preview. If you have too many windows open in preview, it does get kind of, um, it does get kind of upset and it won't let me screen share. So give me a second, let me close out a couple of these other windows real quick. Um, and we're gonna get you settled here straight away. I just got two more to close. Um, and we'll get right in there. Because I do wanna show you some of these stats. There are some very interesting things to look at. So let me get out of here and get that for you guys. And I think, I think we are ready to go now. There we go. Now we've got our stats here. So let's talk about prices. As always, my usual disclaimer, this is telling you what the market was like four to six weeks ago. And we see actually some surprising softness here, right? Like a number of 710, which is a bit lower than we would have expected. That's like taking us back towards the beginning of the year here. Same thing here in our condo market. Though I'm gonna tell you something because of some other slides that we've got coming, I don't know whether these prices are still available or not. Um, I've mentioned this a couple of times on our other broadcast here in our other videos that you know, the market is very uneven right now. The most desirable homes are getting a lot of attention and are not terribly soft on price and you're going to face competition. But buyers are picky and there are some homes, we're calling them the leftovers, right? For one reason or another, these are the homes that buyers are passing by. Maybe they're in a lousy location. Maybe the photography is awful and the house needs a lot of work. Um, these homes are a bit softer and I think you've got a bit more opportunity on them. So that is pricing. Now, what's interesting is we have seen payments bounce back a little bit, but I want you to look at, again, this grand scheme of where is the payment. And this is the total payment, assuming 5% down on that entry level home. So in LA and Orange County. So if you look here, we're right around $5,100 uh, for our entry level single family home. And that's about where we were back in the end, beginning of April, end of March, right? So we've kind of bounced into this range. Things kind of crested here, hit a peak, and then they're kind of just in this range. And this is one of those things that says this is our new normal, right? Because this is a sign of stability, right? The market adjusted and rose up, and then it's kind of staying in this large range. We're seeing the same thing over here on our condo market. It rose up, and then now it's right here around $4,000 a month. So that's sign one that we're kind of in so something that's establishing a new normal or a new equilibrium. If you look at our minimum household income required, $127,000-ish uh, here for entry level single home and our $98,000 for our entry level condo. 
And now I want to talk about our, our 14 day absorption rate. So the, this is a number that's a very quick and dirty way of saying how competitive is the market. Now, I will tell you, this was a holiday weekend. And anytime we have a three-day weekend, one of the things we notice is that buyers don't really slow down a whole lot, but new listings slow down quite a bit. And I think you're seeing these numbers maybe be artificially high a little bit, but hey, these are healthy absorption numbers. Um, even if we look back where we were last week, 77% and 69%, those are definitely still in that, in that light seller's market territory. I don't think we're actually at 95% and 86% for single families. Like I said, I think the holiday weekend has sort of skewed these results a little bit, and we're going to see maybe even an, an, an opposite reaction next week. This is the one I really want to talk about here. And you'll notice historically, right, inventory does slide down at the end of the summer, and then it just kind of tapers off to the end of the year and then starts back anew. But I want you to pay attention to something really important here. And that is the slope. This indicates that these inventory drops might be a bit more drastic and faster than we saw last year. Things might not just gently taper off to the end of the year. I think a lot of this extra inventory that we have this year, this stuff might be jumping off. And in fact, um, if you look at our total inventory, our single family homes, of course, is up, you know, 2,600 versus where were we at? 1,750 last year. That's a pretty big increase. But look at that condo inventory. That's actually slipping quite a bit. And we're about, we're, we're actually at right about the same point we were in last year, which is very interesting to take a look at that. Uh, and again, I'm going to go off share here for a second. This is absolute inventory. What is absolute inventory? It is a, it is a number, X units of homes. We're going to take a look in a second, a couple slides down about relative inventory, right? Which is how many weeks worth of homes do we have based on the current rate that homes are going under contract? So, okay, back in here. This, this inventory thing makes me think that some of this inflated inventory was more of a short-term phenomenon. And I've talked about this in one of our other videos. I, I have a theory that some of this inventory isn't real inventory. And what I mean by that is one of two things, either A, um, you know, these are homes that are just sitting in there and they are largely undesirable and the sellers are unwilling to move to a price point where they were sell. So these homes are just sitting there in inventory uh, without a motivated buyer, but also frankly, without a terribly motivated seller uh, because the stuff we're seeing that wants to move, moves quickly. So our 14 days still active percent. This is another sign that our market is largely stabilized, right? Like this number when it's higher means a less competitive market and it just kind of is stabilized up here. And then finally, we do have our relative inventory, right? And what you can see here is again, another sign of stability. Things rose up, right? Like we were treading in this kind of like three weekish type zone uh, for both of these numbers, right? Three to four weeks. Then we shot up here, and then we've kind of been in this eight to 10 week zone. I mean, look at look at our angel of single family home. I mean, that's really just been sitting at this eight week number, indicating that the market has actually kind of found a place that it's happy in. Uh, even our condo inventory, which jumped right um, to over 10 weeks at one point, has kind of just vacillated back and forth and has ended up at that eight week number. So I think it's really important to understand that when you start seeing these trends, right? where the market moves quite a bit and then it sort of finds a zone that it's happy in, these are signs of a new equilibrium, a new normal, and a market that has been seeking stability. So if you're a first time home buyer, what does this mean? So that's gonna be my little words of advice, right? I would wager to say that especially for first time home buyers, it is never easy. There's not a single point in time where it was somehow magical and easy to just buy a house, at least not in any recent history. But the other thing I'm going to tell you is that there's always something, right? And these challenges change. So in the past 18 months, the challenge was you couldn't get offers accepted, right? You wanted a house and you couldn't get anything accepted. The challenge today, right, is that people are afraid if I buy a house, is it going to go down in value? So there's some market fear from a lot of first-time buyers. I remember if you look back in charts, and I've made this comment before, but it bears repeating to have this sense of perspective. Back in 2012, 
it is largely regarded to have been the best time to have bought a house in Southern California, right? Looking in hindsight, 2012 was a great, great time. I was telling people it was a great time to buy. And you know what? Nobody was buying in 2012. Nobody realized what a great time it was. So I think what's important in this game of real estate is that your likelihood of success as, as an owner of property is directly linked to how long you are able to own property. And I don't just mean owning this particular home you're going to buy, but owning whatever you buy. So if you buy one house, right? And even if that house goes down in value at some point, but you buy an upgraded home, you're, you're buying that upgraded home at a cheaper price, right? Like you're always on that merry-go-round. The key is to be on that merry-go-round as long as possible. And that is what really increases your likelihood of long-term financial success. So off my soapbox, once again, if you would like to be a homeowner in Southern California, we would love to help you. And if you know someone who should be a homeowner and isn't, definitely send them our way. We would love to work with you in the Southern California area, mainly Orange and Los Angeles counties. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And then as always, questions and comments, we love them. We'll see you again real soon.